if it had not been the Lord who's on our side. Now, may Israel say, if it had not been the Lord who was on our side, when men rose up against us, when they had swallowed us up quick, when their wrath was kindled against us, when the waters have overwhelmed us, and the stream hath gone over our soul, when the proud waters had gone over our soul, blessed be the Lord, who hath not given us as prey to their teeth. Our soul is escaped as a bird out of the snare of a fowler, out of the snares broken and we are escaped. Our help is in the name of the Lord, who hath made heaven and earth. Now I will give praise to the God of Israel, straight, 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 straight from my heart. And send a light, sweet incense unto me. Mm. Forever you will always be my father, and I will continuously bow down before thy altar. Oh God of Israel, I give you thanks. I'm so grateful. I thank you for my life. I thank you for my health, for everything that you've given unto me. I thank you for my priesthood, my elder Shadrach, my family, my brethren. I'm so grateful. And I can only wish right now that I'm in Canada, just in that altar room, just even praying unto you and giving you thanks. But, you know, as it stands right now, things are different, but I can still give you thanks with the top technology that we have today. Just want to say thank you um, for everything that you've done to me. With that, I say peace. I'm thankful, I'm grateful, and I'm blessed to be given the, uh, the privilege to serve the most powerful, the most fearful and the most awesome God, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob. Through the altar which was erected by our elder Shadrach and maintained by our Supreme Council, I am humbled to know that because of the altar, we have been given a pathway to our Father. This alone is a true blessing. I thank my God for my elders, my brethren, and my council. I thank my God for my elder Shadrach, as through him, through him, we are here today, serving the Most High. Thank you. Peace everybody, and I would just like to give a short testimony for Feast of Dedication. Um, firstly, I'd like to start off with the spelling B. I'd like to thank the God of Israel for being with me because I also prayed this morning and um, I guess he just helped me to win and I'm really thankful for that. I'm also thankful that the God of Israel, he like, he was, he made it possible that I could have a feast in Canada and that I could even pray in the altar because some people they don't even get to do that and I'm just really thankful for that and that the God of Israel he's always with me like even sometimes at school I would have tests and because I prayed to him and he's always with me I always get good scores and I just like to thank him for that a lot and I really love him and I love all of my family as well because they are very supportive. Peace. Peace, brethren, and happy Feast of Dedication. I'd like to give thanks for our altar, for all it provides for us, for our health, our wealth, our strength, and our sanity, especially in this time where coronavirus is a real thing. I thank the God of Israel for his blessings, Elder Shadrach for his teachings, and I pray that we can just move together in this fold. Peace. I want to give thanks to the God of Abraham, God of Isaac, and God of Jacob for allowing me to be here. I want to be thankful for all that we have in this nation. I also want to give thanks to Elder Shadrach, the Supreme Council, for maintaining 
and also upkeeping our altar week in, week out. Much appreciated, and I'm thankful for that. Peace. Three things I'm thankful for. Number one, Elder Shadrach for even showing us this way of life that we must cherish and not take for granted. Number two, our great God of Abraham, Isaac and Jacob for even putting this altar down here with us so that we can have that as a place of prayer in times of need and even to keep our feasts and holy days. And lastly, our council that continually work for the upholding of that altar. One thing I'm thankful for is that even though I'm all the way over in the UK and our altar is all the way over in Canada, that our source of communication is still being kept alive. And for that reason, I'm so thankful. I'm thankful to my elder and I'm thankful to the Supreme Council. Um, yeah, that's the reason why I'm thankful. Peace. Peace, everyone. I am here today to give praise and thanks to the God of Israel for sending our elder Shadrach to teach us this truth so that we know how to serve him and how to you know, conduct our lives. I will also give thanks for the priesthood and for the altar that he has ordained for us, O Father. Lord God of Israel, I just thank thee for everything that you have done for me, O Father, even bringing me out of the miry clay and setting my feet on higher ground. For the last month or so to this year, really, there was so much going on in my life. I had so much loss to friends and family. But I just thank you, Father, for preserving my life and giving me the strength to go on on this pathway. And uh, I miss the altar so much. And I pray and hope that we'll get the opportunity again to go before the altar. Peace, everyone. Again. Now, what do I think of when I think about our altar? I look at it as a communication device between us and our Father, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob. And I'm truly grateful for our altar because over the years we have seen so many miracles and so many blessings come to brethren and individuals that actually went to the altar. We see the children and brethren alike going to the altar to thank our Father, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob for their life, for, for the days, for the years that he has granted them and asking for many, many more, many more prosperous years. And we have seen brethren that have been down and out, that had nowhere else to go, but they went to our altar. And from that, they received their miracles and their answers to their dreams and their prayers. And I thank the God of Israel for this. I even thank our elder for his knowledge, wisdom and understanding in preparing our altar for us. And even the priests who actually have to look after our altar. Night and day, day and night, weekend, week out. It's just such an honor to know that we have the living altar, the one and only true and living altar for the one and only true and living God. And I'm truly grateful for that. Hosanna. Unity. We need strength. We need unity. You, 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 unity. March on. March on. Bye.
that we dedicate ourselves, our lives to the medium, to the God of Israel. It simply means when we say the feast of dedication is a feast of enjoyment, is a feast of giving, it's important for us to understand that dedication comes in the word dedicate. And once we dedicate, it means your whole soul, your spirit, and your body, all three dimensions are put into the force for you to understand. And again I say, those of you who want to celebrate and to dedicate to the Feast of Dedication with the Israelite Nation Worldwide Ministry, I ask you, the only way you'll be able to understand what Feast of Dedication means is to be with the Israelite Nation Worldwide Ministry, is to be with the council and the priesthood when they get together to dedicate their lives to the altar for somewhere where you can go to communicate with the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob. The Feast of Dedication is very important. It's not one particular time, it's every time that the altar is set up, and that's when we have a feast. Every year, every time during the Israelite calendar, that's the time we have a feast of dedication. So all the emphasis is placed on the altar. All the time that we have in that particular time, all year we've been going to that altar. All year we've been praying to that altar. And that one day, like our fathers did before, like they did in the Old and the New Testament, they have the Feast of Dedication, where they celebrate that time, because it's important for us to understand. It is not an easy task. If you were the altar, think about all the work that you have to do. You have to, you, the altar, has to communicate with God. The altar has to be the medium for you to be able to communicate with God. So all the hard work we put into the spirits, it's time that we celebrate with the spirits and give a feast for them. Because the altar by itself cannot do anything. Everything in the Israelite Nation World War Ministry is spiritual. So we feast with the spirits of the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob. And I thank you again I wish that you all can be with us as we celebrate this most important time, this most important season, the Feast of Dedication. Thank you. Oh. Why don't we fully realize how much we have until it's no longer available? We don't understand the value of something until it's no longer a part of our everyday life. Let's not take this place we call home for granted. Let's not take our temple for granted. I'm sure we've all heard the sayings, home is where the heart is, home sweet home, there's no place like home. Those are free statements we definitely hold true especially during a time when we are physically separated from our Israelite family. When we think of the word home, two thoughts immediately comes to mind. The first thought is the place where we go to praise our God and convene with our brethren, the temple. The second thought is of the place where we rest our head daily. Peace be unto this house, the Israelite nation. Peace indeed be unto this house, because it is our Father's house. It is a place where we call upon the Most High, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob. Home is where we welcome His Spirit, and home is where we, as Israelites, fortify our foundation and prepare for the next generation. Home is where no pretense can be had. Home is where all walls can be torn down and built back up. Home gives us the answers we sometimes don't want to hear. Home is the only place you can run to when there's no more doors to turn to. Home is where brethren dwell together. Home is where there's laughter and pain. Home is where there's sunshine and rain. 
Our temple is definitely a place that should be cherished because where there is home, there is peace, there is love, there is truth, there is prosperity, and there is power. Happy piece of dedication to all those who stay committed to the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob in this Israelite nation, Worldwide Ministries. Peace. Peace, Israel. Today is a special day and a wonderful day for all Israelites. Today is a piece of dedication. And I, for one, I want to say thanks to the God of Abraham, the God of our fathers, the God of Isaac, the God of Jacob, for all the great things that he has done for us. I want to thank the Supreme Council for being that there for us. I want to thank Elder for always being there for us and has to teach us the truth. And I'm so glad that I've known the truth, this wonderful nation. I want to thank the God of Israel, even when we are not at home, the God of Israel has been there with us, has been there with us through our rough days and even through our good times. I want to thank the God of Israel for my family, my children, my wife, and all the things that he has been doing for us. There is no any other God that we can rely upon, whom we can trust, than our only God, the God of our fathers, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob. For this day, we have nothing than these tokens that we have here, and we offer this token to his reputation and to the altar to be utilized by the council to glorify our God for all the things that you've done for us. And with this, I say, Hear, O Israel. The Lord our God, the Lord is one. Selah. Selah. Amen. Peace and happy feast of dedication, brethren. For this feast of dedication, I wanted to praise my God and Father, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob, with one of the talents that he has blessed me with. The gift that I am referring to is the ability to manipulate a jump rope. Let me highlight some of the skills my God has allowed me to acquire. Altar, altar, I heard whisperings of a god from the east with breath like fire and a crown made of stars. I followed the golden path to Jerusalem, seen lions and crows, but this here ain't Oz. In what galaxy could a god live a man in a house made of stone? I was blinded, the walking dead, guess my spirit was in a house made of bone. I heard he is a tree with seven branches with flames on his leaves. I heard he listens and gives the answers for those who pray on their knees. I raised my hands to the heavens and called out to this God of fame. O great God of Israel, heal us of our stains, bless us with mercy, and may we always remember your glorious and wonderful name. O altar, altar, when the waters are dried up from the sky and from the sea, when the ships land on our shores, searching for my brother and for me, when the sounds of the harp, sultry, and horns can no longer be heard in our streets, when the children no longer laugh and all the men do is weep. Help me to remember Jerusalem and pray to our God in the East. Open your ears to our pain and see our afflicted souls. Hear the prayer of the meek, the blind, the crippled, and the old. Forgive our trespass that we may come unto you again. I will forever hold unto your horns, O altar. Let your fire never end. O altar, altar, thou hearest us and send. Hidden at the pillar, 
when I was broken, help came to mend. From new moon to Sabbath, you taketh our speech, delivering it to the God of Israel with endless reach. O altar, altar, so thankful we are. Israel fights on forward, praying in unity, near and far. You are that spiritual connection that brings brethren together. It's feast of dedication we must always remember. O altar, altar I face to the east. God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, I pray unto thee. It's your glory and your might I praise and I thank you for these. And for all of the blessings that you've placed within reach. I ask for forgiveness, understanding, knowledge, and strength to follow your commandments, laws, and decrees. I pray for all of the sheep that are lost to believe, to be called, and receive, that they may learn your statutes from those that talk unto me. God of Israel, I thank you for answering Solomon's plea. Hello, all my Israelite brethren. I pray that all of you are doing well regardless of where you are. I have prepared a testimony for this very special time of year as I wish to ensure my voice is heard, to honor this precious time to our God, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob. The Feast of Dedication is so important as it is a time for all Israelites of the Israelite nation worldwide ministries to pay homage to our altar. We are the only people in this world who have this type of altar an altar that has been extremely beneficial to me and my spiritual growth, particularly throughout this time that we are living in. This pandemic has been challenging for us all in some capacity. I know this firsthand as I have been directly impacted by it. On a personal level, I found the pandemic to be a blessing as I witnessed the spiritual growth of myself during this time. If it was not for this pandemic, I do not believe I would have reached the place where I am at and aspire to be. I want to take this time to give thanks to my elder, for it is because of him that I know this truth. I have the utmost love, respect, and gratitude for him. I pray that the council will continue to be guided to lead this great nation. I pray for everyone worshiping the same God as I worship, the God of Israel. I hold my hands high for at this time, and I wish to all my brethren happy feast of dedication and Pentecost. Peace. In a parallel universe, if you and I were stranded on an island or maybe a part of a country or land far away from civilization and lost, what are the things that you and I would need for survival? Well, let me tell you, we would need a shelter, we would need fire, and we would absolutely need a source of water and let's just say that place that we were stranded at became a place infested by predators wild beasts and animals that would hunt us for prey we would need to build what is known as a boma b-o-m-a the survivalists call it which is basically a lot of thorny branches and bushes put together around our perimeter, around our shelter, to protect us, like hedges, to protect us from the wild beasts. And if by some reason they became hungry and they came to our encampment by night, we would need a fire, a high blazing fire to go all night to keep the wild ravenous beast away. Now, let me share this with you. You and I, we are not only in a strange land, but we are strangers and sojourners in this world like our forefathers were. And in this world, you and I, in real life, we're surrounded by wild, powerful, evil beasts that we cannot see but hunt us on a daily basis. I say this often to my brethren, and now to all of you that are looking at this. 
that in this world, the holy are constantly being hunted by the unholy. And the clean are always hunted by the unclean. And yes, the righteous is persistently being pursued by the unrighteous. But although you and I are strangers in a strange land that is polluted and infested by wild, powerful, evil beasts, you and I need to thank the God of our forefathers, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob. And we need to thank our elder Shadrach for establishing our holy altar and sanctuary. Let me say this very, very clear to you. Very clear. I'm looking at you and saying this to you. It is because of our holy altar that although we are in this strange land among wild, powerful, evil beasts, that we have a solid shelter that cannot be broken down despite rain, snow, or any bad weather. It cannot be broken down because of our holy and sacred altar and sanctuary, you and I have the only source of true living water. Because of our holy altar and the sanctuary, we have hedges round about us. It's like our spiritual boma. Because of our holy altar, ladies and gentlemen, when the wild dogs, when the wild beasts, when all the wild animals start to come at us, all the wild and evil beasts, we have seven massive fires that'll chase them away. Let me repeat that to the person in the back. We have seven massive fires that'll chase them away. Always remember in Survival 101 that if you don't have fire, Oh, God forbid your fire goes out. Your chance, your chance of leaving there alive decreases substantially. I say to you all listening, my brethren, not only my brethren, but all our guests and visitors and all of you who eagerly and sincerely want to worship the true and the living God, that on this path to truth, it's all about survival and enduring till the end. So I say to you, brethren, stay close to the fire. Stay close to the fire. For David said, Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of mine enemies. Thou anointest my head with oil. My cup runneth over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. Wait for it. And I shall dwell in the house and I shall dwell in the house. I repeat, and I shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever. That should be our goal, ladies and gentlemen and brethren to dwell in the house of the God of Israel forever. Our holy altar is being celebrated today because it is the greatest of all altars established and dedicated in the name of the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob. There are no other altars on this earth that can even compare, and I mean that for it is written in the book of Isaiah 19. In that day there shall be an altar to the Lord in the midst of the land of Egypt and a pillar at the border thereof to the Lord. And it shall be for a sign and for a witness unto the Lord of hosts in the land of Egypt. For they shall cry unto the Lord because of the oppressors and he shall send them a savior and a great one and he shall deliver them. The prophet Isaiah is talking about you and I in this time, in this new Egypt. And he said, 
in that day there shall be an altar. An altar. The scripture never said there shall be 100 altars. The scripture never said there shall be a thousand or ten thousand or a million altars to the Lord. There shall be an altar, meaning one. And I thank from the bottom of my heart, Elder Shadrach, because he has established that one altar in this Israelite nation, Worldwide Ministries, a long time ago. And for that, we are forever grateful. Thank you to our Elder Shadrach. But many of us, I've yet had the pleasure and the privilege to come to pay our respect to the God of Israel, the great King, before his altar in this house. And I pray that that time will come for you. I do, if you're sincerely seeking. And some of us have actually ran away from his altar and this house. And then there are some of us that just don't put our hands to the work for this house. My people, we have come through 400 years of being afflicted in a strange land. Now I say it is the time, truly it is the time, for us to build back the house of the God of Israel. And on every rooftop, and in every valley, and on every mountain, we painted red, white, blue, and purple, and we exalt and glorify the name of the greatest God, even the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob. The time has come. This feast of dedication, I've chosen for my scripture to share with you, the book of Haggai. I'm gonna start with chapter one. I'm gonna read verse from verse one. In the second year of Darius the king, in the sixth month, in the first day of the month, came the word of the Lord by Haggai the prophet, unto Zerubbabel, the son of Shetiel, governor of Judah, and to Joshua, the son of Josedek, the high priest, saying, Thus speaketh the Lord of hosts, saying, This people say, The time is not come, the time that the Lord's house should be built. Then came the word of the Lord by Haggai, the prophet, saying, Is it time for you, O ye, to dwell in your sealed houses? And this house lie waste? Question mark. Now therefore thus saith the Lord of hosts, consider your ways. My people, let me talk to you. Is it really time for all of us to go into our own nice homes, sit around the fireplace cozy, nice cars parked in the driveway, focused on chasing our own dreams and aspirations and not thinking about the house of our God? I know we all get wrapped up in life and oftentimes our priority shifts that we focus on our secular life and not the life that we were made to have, our spiritual life to exalt and do the work for the God of Israel. On this feast of dedication, let us remind ourselves and each other to put the God of Israel first, for the Christ did say, Seek ye the kingdom of God first, and all these things shall be added unto you. I'm going to read that again from verse 4. Now therefore thus saith the Lord of hosts, consider your ways. You have sown much and bring in little. You eat, but you have not enough. You drink, but you are not filled with drink. You clothe you, but there's none warm, and you earn wages to put into a bag with holes. Thus saith the Lord of hosts, consider your ways. So even though we are chasing our own dreams in the secular world, what happens? What happens? We eat, but we don't have enough. We find ourselves drinking, but we still need more to drink. We find ourselves wearing clothes, but we are still not warm. And when we earn money, it's like it goes into a bag that has a hole on the bottom and just blows away because we have not put the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob first. My people, the God of Israel says, consider your ways. Go up to the mountain and bring wood and build a house, and I will take pleasure in it. 
and I will be glorified, saith the Lord. You looked for much, and lo, it came too little. And when you brought it home, I did blow upon it. Why, saith the Lord of hosts, because of mine house that is waste, and you run every man unto his own house. I say that this is a reminder for me, and this is a reminder for you, that please, whatever we do going forward, Let's make sure we put the God of Israel and his work first, for that is the reason we were called and chosen. Because God looked upon all the other nations and they were serving their gods. So he needed people to serve him and to exalt his name and do his work. That's the reason we were called. So let's do what God called us to do and get our hands into the work. Please. Again, this is a reminder for me and for you also. Verse 10 says, therefore, the heaven over you is stayed from dew and the earth is stayed from her fruit. And I call for a drought upon the land and upon the mountains and upon the corn and upon the new wine and upon the oil and upon that which the ground bringeth forth and upon men and upon cattle and upon the labor of the lands. Then Zerubbabel, the son of Shittil, and Joshua, the son of Josedek, the high priest, with all the remnant of the people obeyed the voice of the Lord, their God, and the words of Haggai the prophet, as the Lord their God had sent him, and the people did fear before the Lord. Then spake Haggai the Lord's messenger, in the Lord's message unto the people, saying, I am with you, saith the Lord. What does that mean? It means don't worry and don't have fear if we just put our shoulders to the work in the name of the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob if we put our shoulders to the work in the name of the God of Israel, and if we put our hands to work, our whole soul, body, and spirit to work, he will be with us. He will. For this is the reason we were called, was to glorify his name. On this feast of dedication, that is what the Israelite nation worldwide ministries is doing. We are glorifying his name and celebrating the holy altar. That's what we are doing. That is the reason for this day, because we have gratitude to our God and to our elder Shadrach. I mean that. I'll repeat verse 13. Then spake Haggai the Lord's messenger in the Lord's message unto the people, saying, I am with you, saith the Lord. And the Lord, listen to this, stirred up the spirit of Zerubbabel, the son of Shittil, governor of Judah, and the spirit of Joshua, son of Josedek, the high priest, and the spirit of all the remnant of the people. And they came and did work in the house of the Lord of hosts, their God, in the four and twentieth day of the sixth month, in the second year of Darius the king. I hope somehow that this message reached you who are listening to it right now, whether you are part of this nation or whether you're out there trying to come back to this nation. I pray that the God of Israel will stir up each one of our spirits that we will get our hands to work for God and glorify him. We truly have toiled so hard and long for 400 years. Now it is time to build our house of the great God and show respect unto the holy altar. Happy Feast of Dedication. And to you who are out there that really want to be a part of this family, if you truly want to learn from Elder Shadrach and the priesthood, and you want to grow by keeping his laws, statutes, and commandments, we welcome you. Doesn't matter if it, you are Jew or Gentile. If you truly want to serve this God and be a part of this family, we welcome you. There's a link in the description of this video. Click that link and fill out a short form and someone will be in touch with you. To all of you, I wish you peace, love, truth, prosperity, and power. Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. Versus Israel introducing them. Let me at him. Big TJ. Let me at him. Ha. Let me at him. Let me at him. Uh huh. Uh -huh. Let me at him. Let me at him. Uh huh. Uh -huh. Let me at him. Let me at him. Uh huh. Let me at him. Let me at him. Yo.
Big TJ back in the scene, uh, right? Check the EP, you uh, can't deny these rhymes. If you don't know, I've been doing this from knee high. Ain't afraid of these guys, know the side I reside. Uh, Cause I've been under tension, I've been proof tested, and I got sense. I don't sit on the fence, I don't play from the benches. I'm out on the front line, never been a skeptic. Come on. My life's hectic, to put it in perspective. To be or not to believe is the topic. My God's gigantic, your God's microscopic. True. In fact, like the COVID, the plague, like it's Egypt. Yep. Them way them idiots packed us in slaves across the Atlantic. Now they gon' panic, respect it. Knowledge is wealth, so I'm investing. The beast Bitcoin, so my blood's yep. crypt to it. We're a light to the world, stand back if you're epileptic. We're elected, never to be disrespected. If tested, a prayer turn the world hectic. Apologetic is what you need to be in seconds. We're protected. Uh-huh. Read about God's elected, we're eccentric and authentic. And the entrance to God, our very presence is the engine that keeps the world living. Every Prepare for this weapon, there ain't no gun cock, it's the pages I'm turning, the fire still burning Champion of Zion, the pride of the 12 tribes, Babylon falling Gargan, make Gargan, excuse me, I'm talking Israelites marching, 400 years, now you sorry, you begging All good like Megan, transaction pending, watch me defending God of all gods, I get it, God's favourite, you might be cross But I'm a star like David Chill with the tabernacles, dine with the angels Fish with the fishermen, break bread with the masses Who dare test you, uncircumcised wretch? One sling shot to the head, all of y'all dead Bad man like Gideon, against millions, millions. <laughs> Just a I don't run like Jonah, no. I'm not an Olympian Quick with the sword, play something like Simeon But the sword's my word, teaching Corinthians And anyone else to lift the veil of this oblivion So where you really on? I'm not an Assyrian Son of the Most High, not just any civilian So getting silly son, I can promise you that your latter days Gonna be the same as the Midian Cause I'm worth millions, I'll scrap that, I meant trillions I'm the real prince, not William Son of ancient kings, make the queen the recipient Don't care for your opinion, you people are delirious A blessing in the midst of Egypt and Assyria Isaiah 19, check the facts If you're curious, God's ways are mysterious To you, cause you're oblivious So let the truth be told by the spiritually experienced They say I'm the son and the daughter of ancient kings and queens But I don't have an identity They say I'm the son and the daughter of ancient kings and queens Who am I to be black? in a world filled with a human race. But they say, I am the son and the daughter of ancient kings and queens. But who am I with no culture? They say I'm the son and the daughter of ancient kings and queens. But why am I separated from my family tree? They say I'm the son and the daughter of ancient kings and queens. But why is my body parts being ripped apart so far apart from each other? But they say I am the son and the daughter of ancient kings and queens. They said, I have forsaken my father and has broken his rules. and he has closed his door. They said, he said, when I'm ready, he will send that protection once again. They said, he said, he has left me a book that contains my mysterious history and who I am. You know what? I think it's time for me to know who I am and my mysterious history.
I'm down in Detroit, the east side of Detroit, one of the deadliest neighborhoods in America. And for the Feast of Dedication, I just wanted to give a video to say that I'm gonna dedicate my time and the witness of this true testimony and this truth that Elder Shadrock has brought to the nation and that we have a, a pillar at the border and an altar that we can come and worship the true and living God. That way we can take back these neighborhoods, these neighborhoods that have been in the grips of Christianity. This is what happens when Christianity runs uh, a people that don't know who their God is. You get burned down buildings, you get murders and deaths, and I pray that the God of Israel would just start blessing these neighborhoods. I'm gonna come back into these neighborhoods and preach this truth. That's part of uh, my Feast of Dedications to the, to the God of Israel is to come back into these neighborhoods and teach the truth. And I thank you for Elder Shadrach uh, establishing an altar that we can come and give supplication and prayer to our God, this true and living God. And I just wanted to encourage the brethren to get your hands dirty and get out here in the streets and get witnessing for this truth. And because we serve the mighty God of all gods. And I thank you for that. I thank you for this piece of dedications. And I long for the day that I could come to that altar and pray to my God and, and be able to see this altar. And I thank you for our brethren and Elder Shadrock and the Supreme Council to give us this truth and give us a little bit of the understanding of our altar. And I'm forever grateful to that. So my money and uh, that the Lord uh, has been blessing me with for a building and the talent that he has given me within construction to build homes and, and do roofing and all these different things that he's blessed me with. Uh, a lot of that will go back into the dedication back to the God of Israel to promote this doctrine, to get this truth out here and, and give back to the, the greatest of all gods, the God of our fathers, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac and the God of Jacob. Thank you. Peace. David, my father, felt a burning in his soul to make sweet music, to praise the God of old, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac and Jacob. So he gathered a string and cut some wood by the works of his hands when David played. Sweet sound went up and the glory of God did unfold when David played. The sweet sound went up and the glory of God did unfold. He played and played and played for God. He never missed a beat. The music reached the ears of men. They had to stop and see. He gathered singers of women and men to praise God in song. No stopping for them. They kept on and on from dusk till dawn when David played. We sound went up and the glory of God did unfold when David played. We sound went up and the glory of God did unfold. And the glory, the glory came down and the glory, the glory came down and the glory. Glory came down in the glory of God did unfold. Greetings, elders, ministers, teachers, and my brothers and sisters of the Israelite Nation Worldwide Ministry. Welcome to my home. I am so proud to be an Israelite and also proud to be numbered amongst the men of valor of the Israelite nation. It has become increasingly obvious to me that just like the prophets and the apostles of old, we of the Israelite nation have been commissioned to model coming before the Lord God of our fathers correctly as a living example to the Jacobites who are the lost sheep of the house of Israel. We are to teach the truth of Almighty God's written word found in the Holy Bible. 
and we are to pray steadfast for the deliverance of our Heavenly Father's chosen nation. Because the Israelite Nation Worldwide Ministry is teaching me to come properly before the Lord God of our fathers in prayer, I'm dedicating myself to praying for our lost brethren, asking that they receive eyes to see, ears to hear, and a heart to perceive the beckoning call of our Lord. Also, with the inc incredible assistance I'm receiving from the Israelite Nation, I intend to remain steadfast in my efforts to present myself correctly before the Lord God of our fathers, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob. Peace, my brother. Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. Happy Feast of Dedication, brethren. I wrote a spoken word that is entitled, Speaking to Our Father. Dear Father, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob, our altar and our place of worship is dedicated to you. We thank you for this truth, this Israelite family, and our culture. We thank you for our elder Shadrach. So glad he took up the cross and came to find us who were once lost. We thank you, Father, for being our protector, our savior, and our strength in our lives. Thank you for the foundation, for the laws, for the statutes, for the commandments, and the judgments. I pray for your mercy and forgiveness of our sins. Thank you for giving us another chance to make amends. I pray for one and for all because we're all connected by the cord. In your eyes, you see us as one, and in the Bible, you said we are your son. What a blessing it is to be a part of thy family. All praises to you, Father, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob. Peace to all my Israelite brethren worldwide from the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia, California, Jamaica, UK, New York, New Jersey, Atlanta, Missouri, and Toronto. On behalf of the leadership of the Men of Valor, we would like to wish everyone a great and wonderful Feast of Dedication. We also want to give thanks to our Elder Shadrach and the Priesthood for their continuous time and energy that they are poured into us in allowing us to know this truth and the God we serve the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob. And to show our appreciation to our God, the men of valor have put together a variety of talents to showcase on this day on the Feast of Dedication. Peace. I'm Sharman Martin, and we are here representing the Cornerstones from Toronto, Canada. Certainly and absolutely, I cannot achieve anything without the altar. My God, my altar, and my faith, hand in hand together, I don't need nothing else. We were told to make it right with our brethren before we go to the altar, before we present gifts to the altar. Our Father instructed us to keep feasts of dedication to his altar once a year. And before I hand you over to Elvis Malcolm, I want to say special thank you to the hands that prepares the altar for us here at the Israelite nation to go and, and do our prayer. And to my dear, lovely Elder Shadrach, I want to thank you so much, Elder. Peace, my father, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob. God of Israel, I just want to thank you for the special gift, the altar. This altar have done so much. You heal us. You bless us with this one and only altar for our one Israelite nation. I love you, my father, and I thank you for all your blessings and the healing. And with this, I would like to thank you so much, my father, and peace. Welcome to the Israelite nation worldwide ministries, where today we are celebrating the Feast of Dedication. It's such a wonderful feast that our father's given to us as the Israelite nation worldwide ministry to actually keep throughout all of our generations from year to year. Today, I am joined by members of the Supreme Council. We have Elder Michael, Elder Freddie, Elder Kastrilli, and Elder Kirk. But also, we also are missing our two dear sisters of the Israelite Nation Worldwide Ministry, Supreme Council, Officer Charmaine and Priest Doreen, who couldn't make it with us today. But also, not forgetting, our very own Elder Andal also. But we are here and we are present and we are willing and so happy to share 
all of this wonderful knowledge that our Father has given to us through our elder Shadrach and who's taught us how to keep the Feast of Dedication. I would like to firstly open up, you know, just by welcoming my brothers. Oh, by the way, I'm also a priest Tyrone because I kind of like <laughs> excluded myself from everything. <laughs> and welcoming my brothers here at the Feast of Dedication where it's such a wonderful day, uh, such a great day. It's the height of our high time where our Father's given to us to actually keep throughout all of our generations. And just if I may be able just to open up this um, particular segment by just reading from the book of Matthew, um, chapter 5, and I will start from just, say, verse 22. And again, it touches about the feast of dedication and what that means. Now, please listen keenly because <clears throat> all of our brethren here are going to be explaining different segments of this feast and just how important it is to keep this particular feast. So I'm going to start reading, um, if I may. It says, Therefore, <clears throat> if thou bring thy gift to the altar, and there rememberest that thy brother hath aught against thee, leave there thy gift before the altar, and go thy way. First to be reconciled to thy brother, and then come and offer thy gift. Now, one of the reasons why I started off this particular scripture is because everything that we do at the Israelite Nation Worldwide Ministries is about brethren. It's all about brethren and being in one accord and being able to connect with our brethren, but also to be able to connect with the altar of our God. We can't talk to our father if I have something in my heart against my brethren. So this is why I've opened it up because it's a wonderful segment and a way to enter into the Feast of Dedication in the high time. This is our high time in one accord with all of our brethren. And it's a great scripture. And I just want to read just the last verse. It says, Agree with thine adversary quickly, whilst thou art in the way with him, lest at any time the adversary deliver you to, be, to the judge, and the judge deliver thee to the officer, and that thou be cast into prison. So again, that unity amongst brethren before we're going into offering our gift is very, very important. I mean, how could I be happy to give to the God of Israel, who I cannot see, but my brother who I can see and touch, I've got a problem with. It, it, it doesn't quite work, right? Sure. And it's, it's Absolutely. something that we also have to really think about. But moving on, the Feast of Dedication and what that really means. And I would like to open the floor to, first of all, to our very own Elder Michael, just to open us and give us some deeper explanation into this feasting and what, and what it really means to us at the Israelite Nation Worldwide Ministries. So first of all, the precept of dedication, the Feast of Dedication, is to separate from the rest of the world for the use and the services and the worship of the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob, the creator of heaven and earth. This is very important because what it says is that only an Israelite, in other words, a member of the Israelite nation worldwide ministries, would be able to keep this feast unto the God of Israel. It's an opportunity for us to show to the God of Israel that we appreciate having the one altar on earth to serve him. There is no other altar like our altar in the Israelite nation worldwide ministries. And this obviously comes from the wisdom of our elder Shadrach, from, who received that from the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob, and shared it with us. So I am privileged and feel honored to be able to keep this feast unto him, to show him that we indeed appreciate this privilege. And it's a great thing, Elder Michael. Thank yes. you for sharing with that. And Elder Freddie, I know that you've been here right from the very beginning, and mm. you've seen many, many feasts of dedications. Could you also just explain to us, in addition to what Elder Michael has said about the feast of addition, the feast of dedication, just mm. how great this feast sure. is? Sure, sure. Just to piggyback off yeah. of what you uh, what you mentioned, Elder Michael, it, it's very important for everyone to know that there is only one Israelite nation worldwide ministries. There's only one. That's right. There's only one God of Abraham, God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob. Yes. And there is only one altar mm -hmm. by which to serve him at. Right. What we are doing, what we were taught by our elder, is that we are just following the pattern that has been laid down in these scriptures. Um, the scripture that you, that, you, that you brought out was just very fitting because it shows you that in order for you to worship our God, you have to be a member of the family. That's right. And always throughout the scripture, you, could, you would never find another nation serving the God of Israel independent 
of the Israelites. Never. It never happens that way. So that's why we would never have more than one, one altar. That's right. It would always be that True. one altar at Jerusalem where that's we would it. gather and, and make that trek. Trek. Make that 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 journey. Our 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 foremothers showed us the examples. You've seen everything that is here. So when we speak about our altar, we know by what authority we're speaking from. It's not as if we've we've made anything up. We're just simply following the pattern that was given to us. As we go to our altar and we visit our God, we, we bring our prayers. It's it's the foundation of this book, that one family. And how can you, as you said, go to that altar and have something against your brother, something against your sister? And how can you worship a God that you cannot see, but yet you have brethren beside you male and female that worship the same god as you and would have some disagreement something that would uh, prevent you from from serving that brethren or being one with that brethren so again everything ties in to the oneness of who we are that one accord and and this is why we simply follow our elder the instructions that he gave us the, the wisdom of our elder the things that 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 I, I'm willing to bet that there is no other Israelite organization that has an altar. And if you did put one up, or rare one up, it would be to your own detriment because there is only one true and living God, only one God of Israel. Thank you, Elder Freddy. That's very clear and very concise. And just saying that as well, that again, you, how can you serve the God of Israel mm. and not be part of the Israelite nation worldwide ministry? Yeah. How it's could a, you it's keep impossible. it? Absolutely. <laughs> How could you keep the Feast of Dedication, but yet still not be part of this nation where True. the instruction was given to our elder Shadrach mm -hmm. to actually keep the dedication, the laws, statutes, and commandments? It right. doesn't make any sense. Yeah. So it moves me really nicely into Elder Kastrilli, where it's been said that a lot of people keep dedication at all various different times. It's been argued, you know, it's only, only to be kept in the winter. Now, we at the Israelite Nation Worldwide Ministries know that not to be true. And I would like to hand it over to Elder Kishrili just to explain to us as to why that is. Peace, brethren. You know, I'm listening to my brothers. Guys, this is great. And I add to, you know, the one and true God, one altar, one messenger. Elder Shadrach, the one messenger. 1990, he wrote a constitution and we were a handful of people, of Israelites, and he's envisioning a nation, 1990, July 20th, which established our first feast of dedication. Now, at that time, you can see that summertime. At times, we've had our feast of dedication in the winter, just like they did in, in the Second Testament. Yes, it's when the altar is set up. The fascinating and incredible thing, because our God, he works specific to the day, to the hour, to the moment. I want to read one verse in Exodus 12, verse 41. I want to read this while I go into Our God is great. The Israelite nation, worldwide ministries, there's no place like it on earth. Verse 41 reads, And it came to pass, at the end of the 430 years, even in the self same day, it came to pass that all the hosts of the Lord went out from the land of Egypt. The self same day after the 430 years at the time of Moses. Mm -hmm. And as we know in Genesis 15, we've come to the end of the 400 years, 1619 mm -hmm. to 2019. Now, our New Year is not till 2020 in the springtime. That's another discussion. But the first feast of dedication after the 400 years, first of all, the last few years we've been keeping the feast of dedication in the fifth month of Ab on the new moon because that's when the altar was set up a few years ago. And we moved from different, different locations. Mm -hmm. So when the altar was set up, it was on the first day of the fifth month of Ab. Yeah. Now look at this. The first feast of dedication after the 400 years 
was July 20th, which was the first day of the new moon of Ab, the first feast of dedication after the 400 years, fell right on the self same exact day after the 400 years, our first feast of dedication. Wow, our God is great. The yeah, God of Abraham, yeah. the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob. Yes, we're doing something really right. Thank you, Elder Shadrach. Yes. Thank you for this family. Thank you for this nation. So it all it goes down to when the altar, when the temple is built and the altar mm-hmm. is set up, as they kept it in the winter at that time. But as it was in the days of Solomon, it was in the seventh month. Mm-hmm. Yep. So it all depends when the temple is built mm-hmm. and the altar is set up. Just to be specific and bring that point out, bring it forward. Mm-hmm. We're truly in a great place, guys, with the Israelite Nation Worldwide Ministries. To the day, mm-hmm. just like it was after the 430 years, 400 years, Feast of Dedication, the first one. It's just magnificent. Thank you, Elder Kastri. That's Those are dates and times that cannot be made up. Mm -hmm. Those are dates and times that are very precise to our God because our God is very precise in precision in everything what he does. So just saying that you just completely blown away theories that says it can only be kept in the winter because it's as and when the altar has been moved or rebuilt. Mm -hmm. That's it. That's when you keep the Feast of Dedication. And it's wonderful that we know this and we at the Israelite Nation worldwide ministries have the supreme council members here before you to actually show you this and to teach you this things that may have never ever come out if it hadn't been for covid possibly but now we've got this opportunity to bring the truth out to you and our light israelite nation worldwide ministries is now beginning to shine brighter than any other philosophy that will be out there so speaking about the gifts coming to the altar because some may not fully understand, well, what does a gift mean? Do I, do I just bring a pair of socks? Do I just bring a jacket? Do I bring cat food? It's a gift. But we want to be very specific as to what gifts we bring to our God. We fully respect our God. We respect our elder. And we respect our Supreme Council members. So everything that we do has to be our very, very best. When David built the altar after he had numbered Israel and he had commanded um, his son, he brought exceedingly great gifts. Everything was there for him. And even told his son, bring more, add more to this. Don't penny pinch. Don't penny pinch. And he said, make it famous and to all the countries. I mean, I'm, I'm getting goosebumps just speaking about it. I hope it doesn't show up on camera. But I'm getting goosebumps just thinking about it. So I would like to extend this to Elder Kirk, who has some wise words on us and about the gifts and what we do in terms of bringing our gifts to our father. Of course, you know, you can't bring cat food to our God. You can't bring (laughs) pig meat, horse meat, or any of that foolishness. So we have a very peculiar God in whom we rely on, and he's precious to us. And he's given us many gifts himself, many methods to where we can communicate with him uh, so that we could outcry and he would stretch his hand out to us through feasts, through prayer, and one of those instruments is the altar he has given to us. And it's, it's awesome that through the, through the altar, we're blessed, and we receive physical, spiritual. We receive gifts upon gifts. And this particular feast is one of those times where we give back. We give back. The blessings we received, we bless back our God. Let's go to number seven real quick, and we'll jump through a couple things and quickly look at it. And uh, verse seven from the top, it says, And it came to pass on the day that Moses had fully set up the tabernacle and had anointed it and sanctified it, and all the instruments thereof, both the altar and all the vessels thereof, and had anointed them and sanctified them, that the princes of Israel, heads of the house of their fathers, who were the princes of the tribes, and were over them that were numbered, offered. And they brought their offering before the Lord, six covered wagons. You know, I I see this so clear and vivid. You know, the princes, the heads of the tribes, on behalf of all the tribes, coming and bringing gifts so much that we got to have six 
wagons and cover them up, all filled up. And what do we do? And they brought their offerings before the Lord in six covered wagons and 12 oxen, a wagon, and two of the princes, and each one an ox, and they brought them before the tabernacle. And you could read on the rest to see all the magnificent, all the gifts that were given on the, on the feast from the people. It's as, as Elder Freddy said, the family. Who else would be receiving the blessings from our God? The family. Who else would be going and tending on to this altar, this sanctuary? The family. Who else would receive the blessings? That family. So who else would give the gifts back? Who would take the blessings we receive from our God and give it back to the sanctuary? No one else but the family. Absolutely. And that's, that's such a beautiful thing because when we do read the scriptures and my brothers and sisters here, they can, they can attest to this. My brothers here, my sisters that are not here, even our, our brother that's not here can attest that when you read the scriptures of what was brought to our father's home, when the tabernacle was built, even from the days of Moses, when they decked the actual tabernacle, all of the, the fine gold and the curtains, everything for our father's home was the very best. There was no one that scrimped a penny. They brought everything what they could. And not just that, because not everybody was a craftsman. Not everybody could literally make with their hands, but some might be able to produce the material. Some that might be able to be in the court to sing. Some might be able to say just to gather everything in. Everybody put their hands to the actual work to bring a gift for our God at his altar. And you said something also, Elder um, Kirk, about the different tribes. Now, within the nation, we have, you know, groups that are together. And the groups, the purpose of us to bond and to be together as one. Now, those groups, our groups will come with their gifts. This is, this is a little secret. So if you want to join the Israelite Nation Worldwide Ministries, please click the link. That will be made available to you also. But they will have gifts, gifts bring into our Father's home, and we will present them before our God. Amen. Now, we are the only altar, as my brothers know, the only altar unto the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob. Elder Freddy said that. Elder Kastrini said that. Elder... Michael said that, and Elder Kirk has just said that. The only altar. So when you hear about all, there's millions, right? Billions of altars set up all over the world. I mean, I've got to hand that over to Elder Freddie. Billions of altars, Elder Freddie. I mean, what say you about those altars? Billions of altars, but not one to the God of Israel. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I mean that, that's what it's all about because we were never meant to be shared amongst other peoples. Neither was our God meant to be shared amongst other people. You come into the God of Israel and come into the fold. It's not the other way around. So we are very proud of who we are. We're very proud of our independence. We are very proud to say that we are the only, again, the only Israelite nation worldwide ministries that, has, that is the home to the God of Israel. And anyone else they can they can have their own altar they can do whatever they want to do mm -hmm. but it won't be just listen to this it won't be dedicated to the god of abraham the god of isaac and the god of jacob how many times do do you actually hear that except for here mm -hmm. you don't hear the god of israel you don't hear the god of abraham the god of isaac and the god of jacob anywhere else Nowhere except else. for the Israelite nation. So if that is the God you want to serve, if that is the God you want to, 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 to have recognize you, to be a part of this family, join us. Join us on the Feast of Dedication. We will let you know when the Feast of Dedication is at its appointed time when we reared our altar to our God. That's and, 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 that's that's, and that's, again, this is our authority in taking this on. This is our commitment. This is what we do. So we don't follow, we lead, and this is what we have been led to by our elder. And we are now shining examples of throughout the entire world. Absolutely. <laughs> Absolutely. Thank you, Elder Fred. I mean, today being the Feast of Dedication is a mm. day where, as Elder Fred is saying, that you could start a starting point to understand one of the high high times at the Israelite Nation Worldwide Ministries in terms of our feast, our dedication to our God. It's not a time of misery. It's not a time of sulkingness. It's not a time of discord. It's a time of unity and strength. Unity and strength because 
as we read the scriptures that all my brothers have actually read is that the brethren came together at the temple with Solomon they came together mm -hmm. with Elder Shadrach in this time Elder Freddy were together in those days with Moses together they everything is together mm -hmm. it's a unit it's one man with one as Elder Castrilli said one God one altar one baptism that's it one religion one religion <laughs> one, one messenger that's it and to join us it's it's a wonderful thing and there's something that our our brother elder Andrew always says which he's always calling for Jacob and Israel to come home and honestly Jacob and Israel come back home this is the Israelite nation worldwide ministries where the authority to teach our father's world worldwide has been given to our elder Shadrach who has taught us and we're telling you and pleading with you almost just like the God of Israel pleading with his own children to come back home and be serious about it because we as a people we understand who we are every single brother who you see here and my sisters that are not here and brethren we know who we are we know who we are and the altar can I can I just basically go over one of my favorite scriptures I'm not going to go into it but right. one of my favorite scriptures is with Elijah oh. when Elijah and the prophets of Baal you know I really love that scripture but there's a reason why because he could have easily said, raise his hands up and said, God of Israel, light this, this uh, bullock and we're by fire and it's all done and everything is done. But he did something significant just to show, just to show Elijah was, Elijah was an Israelite. That's number one. But also he built an altar of 12 stones as to where the God of Israel would answer him by. So it's very significant in terms of an altar it's only being answered by the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob for Israel. Israel, Elder Michael, what, what say you? Well, I think the, the issue that we have to understand, I think I mentioned this earlier, is to dedicate our dedication, sanctification, the same thing. You're separated from the rest of the world. At this, to Elder Freddy's point, you cannot have all these multiple or, or order, uh, altars, right, towards the God of Israel. He, according to his instructions, stipulated one altar. He, whether it was Moses, whether it was Solomon, whether it was Christ Jesus or our elder Shadrach, one altar, one God, as you said, one baptism. All of that is, is part and parcel of what we do. It, it gives me a great deal of satisfaction and there's nothing greater than this mm -hmm. to be able to participate in the service of this God who created the heavens and the earth mm -hmm. who is the king of all kings right and to to tell him to let him know that the ability to come before this altar and call upon his name and to show our gratitude and appreciation is indeed something that we take very very seriously and this is what we are here to, to explain. And therefore, to demonstrate to him by the gifts that, yes, thank you for doing this to my father. Mm -hmm. This is what it's all about. This is wonderful. Yeah. I mean, just hearing you say that, you know, it's, it's, so, it's so powerful because what you're saying is that the, only, that the only God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, being one God, answers to us by that one altar. So you can't set up a mini altar in your bedroom or, I don't know, in your bathroom or in your cupboard or in your closet and say, and pray to this God. He can't answer you, Elder Kastrini. What does that, I mean, how does that make you feel? I'm, I'm telling you, I, I look at the power of our God and going to the altar and the scary thought of turning my one's back to the altar. Right turning their back and going, where? Where do you go? What do you do? When I'm listening to all of us speaking here and I reflect, as you did even the, the story of Elijah, mm -hmm. I, I look back at the story of when the kingdom was rent in the days of Rehoboam and Jeroboam, when their Israel battled within. Mm -hmm. There was the fight within. Mm -hmm. And... There was the kingdom of Israel and the kingdom of Judah. Mm -hmm. 
and the kingdom of Israel set up Samaria as a capital. And then you, you, you fast forward to the days of Jesus the Christ where he goes, I read just from Matthew 10, go not into the way of the Gentiles mm -hmm. and into any city of the Samaritans, enter ye not. Right. He's like saying, it's not saying if the Gentiles come, fine. It's not time yet. Mm -hmm. If the Samaritans come, fine, but don't go to them. Right. The Samaritans, Samaria, they were still Israel. Were they Israel? But the, the, the altar was at Jerusalem, right. not in Samaria. Mm -hmm. And he said, but go rather to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. Take care of my children first. Mm -hmm. You turn your back to our altar mm -hmm. and you, you're all downhill. There Where is. do you go? Mm -hmm. There's no other place to go, as we said there's one God of Abraham, God of Isaac, God of Jacob. There's one altar, one religion, one Israelite nation, worldwide ministries. This is the place to be. Mm -hmm. So when that all happened, it's still the altar was established in Jerusalem. While the kingdom of Israel that time was doing all kinds of stuff, is setting up all kinds of different days to worship on the eighth month. And where's mm -hmm. not in our book? So just to say, yeah. the fear of turning your back mm -hmm. to our altar, it's done. Yeah. There's nowhere else to go on this earth. Mm -hmm. And Elder Kustrilli, on that note, I'm going to have to bring it to an unfortunate close. Because <laughs> this is oh. such a rich subject. There is so and you've much. heard from all members of the Supreme Council who are here and present about the feast of dedication. And what it really means to us at the Israelite nation Worldwide Ministries, and our Elder Shadrach. We are the only altar unto the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. We are the only ones authorized to teach from this book. And we are the only ones who keep the feast in its appointed season. So we want to thank you, brethren, friends, and guests, for joining us and listening to us. And we hope that you've actually learned something about this feast. And you can take away muse upon it. Please do your best to tell your friends and your family who we are. Join this Israelite nation. We are a great nation and we want to say peace. 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 And Solomon stood before the altar of the Lord in the presence of all the congregation of Israel and spread forth his hands toward heaven and he said, Lord God of Israel, there is no God like thee in heaven above on earth beneath, who keepeth his covenant in mercy with thy servants who walk before thee with all their heart. Hearken thou to the supplication of thy servant and of thy people Israel, when they shall pray towards this place, and hear thou in heaven thy dwelling place, and when thou hearest, forgive, and when thy people Israel be smitten down before the enemy, because they have sinned against thee. For there is no man that sinneth not, and thou be angry with them, and deliver them from the enemy that carried them away captive, far or near. But if they bethink themselves and return unto thee with all their heart and with all their soul and pray unto thee towards their land, then hear thou their prayer and their supplication and maintain their cause and give to every man according to his way whose heart thou knowest and teach them the good way which in they should walk and forgive thy people that have sinned against thee and all their transgressions wherein they have transgressed against thee for thou didst separate them from among all the people of this earth to be thine inheritance moreover concerning a stranger that is not of thy people Israel, but cometh out of a far country for thy name's sake. For they shall hear of thy great name, and of thy strong hand, and of thy stretched out arm, when he shall come and pray towards this house. Hear thou in heaven thy dwelling place, and do according that all the stranger calleth thee for, that all people of this earth shall know thy name. To fear thee is to thy people Israel, and they may know that this house which I have built is called by thy name, O Lord my God. Peace, peace.
brethren and guests. We give thanks to the God of Abraham, God of Isaac, God of Jacob for allowing us to be a part of this nation. As we celebrate the Feast of Dedication, it gives us the opportunity to reflect on our God, goodness towards us, and to also give thanks for what he has done for us as a couple. Being a part of the nation allows us to also benefit from the altar being lit. As a part of this family, we partake in the blessings. We reflect on the day in which we met Priest Tyrone at the nation's parking lot. I recall meeting Priest Tyrone at the parking lot, and I think it has been a blessing to us. It was a very important day in our lives because it was the day when we decided that we want to follow this God, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob. I recall Priest Aaron saying to us that we did not happen, just happen to be at the nation, that we were not there by chance, but that we were there at a very, very important time. I recall, us, I recall him telling us that the brethren were in Virginia commemorating the 400 years. That the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob has called us into this nation. We don't know what our role will be yet. You know, we're still learning, we're still searching. We didn't know anything about the feast days, Passover. We didn't know anything about uh, the holy days or anything like that. But we're learning and we are, you know, we are committed to following this truth and following our God. Love the culture, love my family, and just want to give thanks to uh, Elder Charles Brock and the, the family, you know, for loving us, for taking the time out to teach us, to care about us. And we indeed feel like we belong, you know, we, are, we feel like we're part of this great big family. And we just want to say thank you and peace. Peace and welcome to my Feast of Dedication testimony. My name's Sam Lewis. I'm really grateful for you joining me here and listening to what I have to say for a short while. All praises, all thanks to the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac and the God of Jacob for the breath of life and even this covenant that we have. And of course, I would be remiss if I did not mention and say a massive thanks and big up to the master teacher of the Israelite Nation Worldwide Ministries, the one and only, our elder Shadrock. So I thank you for your life. I thank you for your humility and your grace. I thank you for everything that you have literally given unto us in terms of knowledge, wisdom and understanding, even of this doctrine. I applaud you and I am super, 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 super 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 um excited as you can tell um to be here with you and sharing my testimony with regard to what the god of israel has done for me and how he's blessed me even with this extended family and even with this knowledge and this truth and this understanding i'm truly grateful for all that i have and i know that it comes because we are keeping this truth we're keeping this doctrine and the altar is an amazing and essential part of that our prayers are heard there the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob appeared unto our forefathers um, in, 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 in the altar, at the altar. And so for us, it is a very sacred and special time. And for us to dedicate and bring ourselves uh, to the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob is an important part of being an Israelite. And being an Israelite man as well, I'm truly humbled and I'm grateful for this opportunity to share the facts that, you know, without the altar, I would not be here. I wouldn't be here for the countless hours and service that the men, the priests give in order to maintain our altar. And I am truly grateful for all that I have achieved as a result of it. You know, my promotions, my own business, um, just the conversations that I've had and the deeper understanding of this doctrine and the work that I'm able to put back into this nation is only a small part. And even my ties and being able to support the altar in, in such a meaningful way is truly, truly a blessing for me. And so I'm really happy, super excited. Um, and I pray and I ask that the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac and the God of Jacob blesses you as you watch the remainder of our Feast of Dedication service. Thank you and have a fantastic, fantastic day. Peace.
Happy Feast of Dedication. Wishing you all a great day. First and foremost, I want to give thanks to the greatest God there is, the God of Abraham, God of Isaac, and God of Jacob. Just want to give him thanks and praises to all his blessings and even taking care of us as his people. And secondly, I want to thank our elder uh, for bringing his truth to us so we know about days like this, to keep days like this, and even to give thanks on days like this. I also want to give thanks and, and, and to our priesthood for all the great work that they do in the nation so that we um, could serve our God the way we're supposed to serve our God. Um, so for, and, and lastly, I just want to give, um, wish my brethren a happy feast of dedication. And with that, I say peace. Happy Feast of Dedication, Israel. What a pleasure and an honour it is to be with you guys today and celebrating and honouring this time. We truly worship the greatest God that there is, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac and the God of Jacob. And I too want to thank our master teacher, Elder Shadrach, for teaching us his truth, for sacrificing his time and sharing this knowledge that we today have this understanding. And I'm also grateful to the Supreme Council who support him in his efforts to build this nation so that we today can understand ourselves and understand our identity. My goodness, the altar. So many things have taken place at that altar. We have been wedded at that altar. We have poured out tears in that altar. We have sang songs of praise and joy at that altar. Oh my goodness the feast of dedication where we can just give thanks that we have the opportunity to go before the altar. And you know what the scriptures say about the altar that would be in the midst. The scriptures say that the altars will be in the midst. And I'm not going to go too much into that, but we just want to celebrate today, just give thanks and glory to the God of Abraham, Isaac and Jacob. I want to thank my fellow supreme and my fellow council members, our priest Ricardo, teacher Jaden, and Kwame for all the work that they continue to do here in the UK branch. And I just want to say to all the Israelites out there, happy feast of dedication, big up yourself, continue to work continuously because you know what? The God of Israel knows our hearts, he sees everything that we do, and he continually blesses us and takes care of us. Peace, Israel, and happy feast of dedication. Peace and happy, happy, happy Feast of Dedication to my brethren, to all those watching, you are witnessing our marvellous culture at such a joyous time. This is a time when we give thanks unto our holy altar. You know, the scriptures say, it shall be an altar most holy, that whosoever toucheth the altar shall be holy. Are you seeing the blessing the privilege and the honour that we have here at the Israelite Nation Worldwide Ministries. Righteous men have erected an altar before the Lord in times past, as you can read in the scriptures. Our elder Shadrach has erected this altar in this present day and age. So thank you to my elder Shadrach. Thank you to the priesthood who continually uphold and maintain our holy altar. Thank you, thank you, and thank you. You are keeping our source of communication alive that even our prayers may be heard. And with that, I say happy Feast of Dedication and peace. Peace and welcome to the Israelite Nation World Ride Ministries UK branch. Happy Feast of Dedication. The Feast of Dedication, wow. For many of years, we've been taught by our master teacher, Elder Shadrach, about our altar and about keeping, you know, the altar clean and preparing it. Thank you to our God of Abraham, God of Isaac and the God of Jacob for even selecting our master teacher, Elder Shadrach, so we could even know about these great things and that even us over here in the UK, we draw from the altar. And we get so much from it and we're not even near it. But we know the importance of that altar. Thank you to our elder Shadrach. And I thank the council 
even the, the ones even in, in Canada, the priests and stuff who prepare the altar and work night and day to make sure that altar is kept well so we could even benefit from it. These in this, at this even this time here where we all come together as one and to serve our God and to give appreciation and dedicate ourselves even to our God, even for the altar. So even with the altar, we're the only ones in the world to have this altar. No one has an altar like ours. Thank you to our elder shadow to even teaching us that way. So with that, I will say happy feast of dedication. And I hope you all enjoy yourselves. Peace. Peace and blessings, brethren and guests. My name is Kevin Jameson. And I would like to share a testimony video of my journey back to the Father the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob. My journey began when I was baptized as a Christian when I was about eight or nine years old. My family, my mother and father in particular, were old Southern Baptists, and we celebrated all the holidays, all the Christian pagan holidays. We grew up believing that Jesus was white and that he was God. We even believed in the Trinity, which I really never understood, but I believed it. Those pictures of white Jesus in my house and in the shrines always bothered me. I just couldn't connect to those pictures of this white Jesus, the white God. So uh, with that, I have um, I never felt any connection to Christianity on a spiritual level. The second part of my journey started when I studied Islam and became Muslim. Like many Jacobites, I embraced Islam partly because it was not Christianity, it was not a white man's religion, and they did not worship a man. The issue I had was with uh, segregation in Islam. Many Arabs do not respect and fully recognize non-Arabs as Muslims. So they can have their religion and their God. I have mine. I'm home. The final leg of my journey was being guided to Elder Shadrach and the Israelite Nation Worldwide Ministry. The first video I watched was Get Out of Christianity. And hearing that truth just blew me away. I think I watched that video maybe three or four times. And uh, all the other videos, I mean, I just went through and I just kept watching videos. Uh, Elder Michael, Elder Freddie, you name it, uh, Priest Doreen, you know, all of them. I, I just watch them, and they're all on the same page. They're all very knowledgeable. You know, so after that day, that time when I was guided to Elder Shadrach, I have never been the same spiritually. All my prayers, big and small, have come true since that time. As uh, Christ Jesus said, know the truth and the truth will set you free. Trust me, I'm free and my search is over. My Israelite journey has begun. I believe in the God of our fathers, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob. Peace and blessings. <laughs>
as my gratitude So much things I'm grateful for All the times you heard my prayer You brought me miracles You're so merciful I'm glad my heart to you My tears they overflow With so much glad Get up on my knees, I take my bow and then I pray Thank you for the blessings that's provided every day Lord, you took my hand, I watch you guide me through the rain The glory and the power ask me how I can't explain And so I praise you through the smiles and through the pain I gotta bring my gifts to you and pile them at the gate uh, Frankincense and murder, sanctify your holy place The Lord of hosts, my trust is only in your name still, with my hands stretched high, looking towards the sky. The breeze creating comfort like a hug, flowing through my fingers like a clasp to hold. Inhaling the air, the fresh air. Being in complete amazement, giving thanks, praises as tears stream down my face, saying your name out loud. 
finding words to say, trying not to forget, only to be on repeat. Standing still, with the breeze flowing past me, repeating your name. Trying not to forget, I feel a presence around me. Tears flowing, my hand is held, not trying to lose my focus. I hold on tighter, with gratitude and with comfort. So in unison we stand, swaying with stretched out arms, saying your name. The breeze, holding my hands with watered filled eyes, giving thanks, appreciation, sharing shame and seeking forgiveness. We stand together, asking, do you hear us? God of Israel, please. Hear us.
Back in the day, 
teeth that noses to flop. These roads are bumpy, some turned against me. Bow down, bow down. Bow down. 